It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Widener Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be heard on the MikeWidenerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with a wonderful singer, songwriter, musician with two beautiful girls who, who was born and raised in Louisiana, now in Nashville, and he's got some really hot music coming out. He went to culinary school and has got his own barbecue sauce, and he worked at a bakery but lost it in Hurricane Katrina near Hasburg, Mississippi. Spent five years of tour duty in the Air Force, and he's got some music out there who just sings with a great passion. We got Sing Me Back, Gun in My Hands. We'll talk about that. And what's his plans coming up for uh, this year and beyond? And live, ladies and gentlemen, from beautiful downtown Nashville, the next, next superstar hailing from Louisiana and just comes like a hurricane, John Eason. John, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, how's it going, brother? Hey, I'm doing great. So you're a singer, songwriter, musician with two beautiful girls. You were born and raised in Louisiana, and now you're in Nashville, and you have a couple of songs we're going to play. You've been in culinary school. you got your own barbecue sauce, and I'm looking forward to that. I love to grill and cook. You spent five years of tour duty in the Air Force. You worked at a bakery, and, of course, you also got your music. And before we get into all that, tell us how you got started. Uh, well, my family is uh, all musical on my mom and my dad's side. So uh, my dad played in bands. He was the long-haired, beard kind of guy and played – all the old honky tonk music. And then my mom's family, they're gospel singers. And so uh, I got to grow up in church seeing my dad play and my mom and them sing gospel. And I just always was waiting for that time for my chance to get up on stage and start playing. So, <laughs> and it sounds like you got your dream come true as well, too. And um, <laughs> who, are, who are some of your favorite artists and uh, singers and mus- musicians growing up, especially in the gospel sector? Well, there's a, a family who's who's kind of big where we come from, and it's the Cox family. They actually play a lot with Allison Krauss, so I got to see a lot from them. Uh, but I grew up on Johnny Cash and Leonard Skinner and folks like that. Uh, CCR is my dad's favorite, so uh-huh. I always try and play a little bit of them. Mm-hmm. And, and and also, how would you describe your um your 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 son when it comes to your music? <laughs> You know, it, it's it's funny you ask that question. I get asked that question a lot, and folks want to say it's outlaw country, and then some folks want to call it country. Man, I just call it real music. You know, I, I try and make stuff that's real and from the heart, and it's just music. I think the best artists in the world, that's what they do. Mm-hmm. And, of course, when it comes to your lyrics as well, too, what do you base your lyrics on? Uh, I try and base it from real experience, uh, from stuff that comes from my heart. Uh, Gun from my hands is from my experience in the military uh, and the PTSD and things that I suffer with. Mm -hmm. You also spent five years of tour duty in the Air Force as well, too. You can tell us a little bit about that. Uh, Well, you know, after I lost that baker you talked about, Katrina, uh, I needed to pay the bills and, you know, it weighed on my heart to go join the military. So, uh Joined the Air Force, and uh, they said, oh, you'll never deploy, John, never. Uh, Within three months of getting to my first base, I was getting ready to head overseas. So, uh, you know, it it was a great experience. I loved it. You know, even being overseas, I tell people all the time, one of the most beautiful pictures I've ever seen was snowed in in the mountains up in Kabul, Afghanistan. We were snowed in for two weeks, and it was just some of the most gorgeous mountains and things you've ever seen. 
Oh, it makes you want to go skiing over there. That's what it sounds like. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, and what are some of the other places that you um, visited or had served during your tour of duty in the Air Force? Like what other countries, cities, and everything else? Well, uh, you know, we always stopped through Germany. So uh, I got to go to a place there. One of my favorite times ever uh, was this place right off of Ramstein Air Force Base. It's called Big Mama Schnitzel. So Big uh, Mama Schnitzel. <laughs> yeah. You go in, you order a schnitzel. It's about the size of a dinner plate. And I mean a big dinner plate. And you order a beer, and it comes out from in the booth that you see on TV all the time. So... <laughs> We were starving getting off the plane. Some of the most delicious schnitzel I've ever had. Uh, we've been to Ireland. I uh, got to stop off in Italy a few times. Of course, we've been to uh, uh, Dubai, over in the Deed area, uh, Iraq a few times, Kuwait, so lots of different places. And what do you consider a favorite, favorite place to visit during your tour in the uh, Air Force? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Um, you know what? We always like stopping off in Ireland on the way back because you haven't really been able to drink. And when you get back, you get to stop in and pretty much get an armload of beer and go sit down and start drinking. Oh my gosh. I think I'm ready to have some with you here. So what, <laughs> what, what, what are some of the meals that you had in Ireland too, as well? I know there's a lot of potatoes there and there's a lot of bread. There's also beer. Of course, of course, there's always a joke about having a six course dinner along with a beer as well too. What was it? Six pack and a potato. So it kind of makes me think of it, but what, what was some of your favorite dishes you had in Ireland? You know, we didn't really eat a lot when we were there in Ireland. We would stop and grab that armload of beer, and that was kind of our meal. Uh, but I will tell you this, some of the best food I've ever had, I actually had over in Afghanistan, uh, it's called Nami, and they would take naan bread, which is real popular now, and split it in half, and they would take the potatoes you were talking about, mix it with cheese and chili peppers, put it back in between the bread and put it on a brick oven, and then <laughs> serve that to you with this kind of chili salsa. That was absolutely phenomenal. Wow, you're making me hungry already. <laughs> well, I'll talk about your experience in culinary school, your own barbecue sauce. You worked at a bakery, but first listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be heard on the Mike Show.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here a singer, songwriter, musician with two beautiful girls, John Eason, who grew up in Louisiana, now in Nashville. We talked about his five years of tour duty in the Air Force, how he got started in music. And let's talk about some of your um, experience in food. You got me hungry already, but of course, I can't eat on the air. It's quite rude. Culinary school you've been to. You have your own barbecue sauce. You worked at a bakery, but you lost it in Hurricane Katrina down Hasburg, Mississippi. Um, tell us how you got into culinary school and how you got interested in food. Well, my uh, my grandmother was a great cook, and so was my mom. Uh, and one of the things that uh, my mom always wanted was that uh, I would learn to cook so I could take care of myself <laughs> when I grew up. So uh, I watched them. Of course, it was all good southern home-cooked food, biscuits and gravy and Ooh. ear steaks and purple whole peas. And so my grandfather and my grandmother, they always canned all their own food. And stuff. So we had great home-cooked food. And I think it just kind of developed from there. Um I was in a hospitality management program uh, for my first school, and then uh, I got called up with this culinary school, and they said, hey, are you interested in coming up here? Our next semester starts in about two weeks. I said, sign me up. So, <laughs> I'm I, hungry. <laughs> yeah. I filled out the paperwork. I told my parents, I said, hey, I'm moving to New Hampshire and going to culinary school. So, oh, wow. Uh, New Hampshire. Amazing. New Hampshire. Yeah, it was a, it was my first trip, you know, and uh, not trip, but first thing of being out on my own. And it was kind of my first addiction to traveling and being out on my own. I've always been a gypsy uh, from that beginning there. And so getting up there on my own just made me hungry for that even more. Oh, my goodness. And, of course, you spent a couple years in culinary school. And what, what restaurant did you work at before going down to the bakery? 
Well, I worked in a few little um, home home places, and I worked in a few in New Hampshire. Uh, when I first got back to Hattiesburg, I worked at a place called Walnut Grill uh, and a few little places there. I did some baking for them. Uh, I actually got one of my best compliments, I think, ever. There was a guy. He's from New York City originally. So, uh, you know, one of the big things in New York is they think the bread is always better, which I kind of got to agree there's something with the water. But I made, <laughs> I made ciabatta bread for him, and he said uh, this is as good or better than anything I've had in New York City. So what? I was like, oh, okay, okay, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're talking about all kinds of breads. You talked about the bread you made for the guy in New York, the non bread, and I think there's a couple other breads. Um, what, what, what is your favorite bread that you like to make, and what's your favorite bread that you like to eat? Oh, man. Uh, they're both the same. It's my favorite to make, and it's my favorite to eat. It's uh, And I, I'm probably not going to pronounce this right, but it's uh, called focaccia. And uh, it's really originally from Italy, I believe, uh, made with a lot of olive oil and sea salt. Now, the way we used to do it was we put sun-dried tomatoes and fresh basil in there and then make a sandwich with it. Ooh, that that sounds interesting. I'm going to have to try some. And And what's the most difficult bread you ever made? Oh, most difficult bread. You know, one of the ones that uh, is pretty difficult to do and make sure you get right uh, is challah. Challah. Which is, yeah, that's uh, that's actually from a Jewish recipe. Okay. So. Wow. I'm going to have to try that, too. And you also got your own barbecue sauce called Renegade. Tell us about that. And what inspired you to come up with your own barbecue sauce? Well, I have always loved to grill. And uh, we... <laughs> Uh, my family's always been big grillers. I actually did a whole hog for my uh, second wedding. Um, so <laughs> we've always liked to grill and barbecue. I've done the barbecue for a long time. And here recently, you know, as a musician, you, you have to create a brand. Uh, and I always wanted to not try and create something fake. I wanted everything about me to be real when I interacted with people. And so I love to cook. And I always want to have all my passions as part of what I do not just the music side of it. So I wanted people to be able to see that side of me as well. So I talked to the restaurant owner of the place I worked during the day, and I said, hey, man, what do you think about doing this? And he said, yeah, let's do it. So we got together one night, and we just started throwing stuff in the pot, and we kind of developed the sauce, and said, this is it. So we canned it up and started putting it out, and we've been using it in the restaurant and selling it. I just shipped the case to Louisiana, so... (laughs) Oh my goodness! And can we and can we purchase this online, or do you have a website, or how can we get a hold of this barbecue sauce renegade? I'm actually getting ready to put it up on my merchandise store on my website, which is uh, www.johnneasonmusic.com. So it will be available there along with all my other merchandise. And then, of course, I'm one of those people I'm really reachable right now because I'm not famous, but we're working on it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, when it comes to your barbecue sauce, you're automatically famous. I mean, I mean, look at all the greats they had on there. My goodness. I mean, I, mean, uh, I, I can't think of it right now, but you get the point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, I think I'm ready to start my own barbecue sauce. And, of course, you know, ha- having it tied into music, we'll get that in just a minute. But first, you listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here a singer, songwriter, musician with two beautiful girls, John Eason, who grew up in Louisiana, now in Nashville. We talked about um, going to culinary school in New Hampshire. He's got his own barbecue sauce, and um, he'll tell you once again how to get it. Worked at a bakery, but lost to Hurricane Katrina in Hattiesburg, and talked food, 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 and how, how he got into music. And speaking of music, we have a song out here for you from John Eason called Gun in My Hands, right here on the Mike Wagner Show. The whiskey and the pills came drown the voices and the nightmares keep breaking through 
I'm afraid to close my eyes Cause the ghost I'm facing But I see them when I'm away too You can't see the scars I'm hiding I hope you never run stain Okay, we're having some technical difficulties on the Mike Widener Show. We'll get to that in just a minute. Um, talk about the song Gun in My Hands and uh, what inspired you to write the song. Tell us more about it. Uh, so Gun from My Hands, um, you know, being over in Iraq and Afghanistan, there's certain things you deal with uh, in being in the military. And there's guys you've dealt with way worse than what I have. But um, coming home from dealing with those things and kind of carrying those weight on your shoulders, you got scars. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a lot of times those are scars that people can't see dealing with PTSD and things like that. So, um, you know, I went into some dark days, um, and I, I eventually came out, you know, the other side after some help from the uh, VA and help from a lot of friends and family, people who were there for me. But as in with all things, I wanted to put that in my music. I wanted to show people that side of me and kind of raise awareness, um, about it and let people kind of get a window into maybe what their friend or their brother or sister uh, might be dealing with. So um, I had put the song together uh, and started pulling some things out and worked on it. I had a piece together, and I sat down with two of my friends, Olivia West and Chris Midget, and we sat down and, and finished the song out, and it was just – it felt like pulling all the stuff that was inside of me out and putting it on the page. And mm-hmm. that's what I wanted to do was show people, like the song says – these are the scars you can't see. These are the scars that I'm hiding. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, with the case of PTSD, and, um, and and of course, you know, making everybody aware that uh, how can people help with PTSD and where can people get support? Well, of course, you know, when it comes to the veterans, there's the veteran crisis lines. Uh, there's people out there um, all over the place, you know, and of course, reach out to the people who are closest to you, too. And my biggest thing with people has always been, don't be free to talk about it. There's a lot of people, especially for us guys, you know, we're, we're big, strong guys, and uh, we feel like we got to shoulder it all. But you got brothers in arms, sisters in arms, and you got people who care. So, you know, reach out, say something when you're struggling, because that's the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. And what are some of the events that you recall involving PTSD? Maybe just a few events, and if you're not comfortable by it, we understand. Sure. You mean as far as events that I've dealt with myself or things from overseas? Um, it, it can it can be either or. You know, it can be overseas, it can be yourself, or it, sure. it sounds like the overseas you probably um you got got some of it from. Well, I mean, of course, there's lots of things over there. Uh, some that I wouldn't want to go into, but I'll give you a prime example of something that you're going to always carry with you. Uh, all your brothers and sisters that you serve with, they're near and dear to you, and it really is a family that you become with those people and you spend more time with them a lot of times than, than your own family because you're deployed together. And it really is, you know, it's not just about blood. So when any of those people pass away due to something over there, when you're serving over in Iraq and Afghanistan, it hits you hard. And there was one such occasion in Kabul, Afghanistan, when we had a a Navy SEAL helicopter go down in combat and they brought all the guys back. One of the jobs that I had to deal with, was we were one of the people who transported bodies onto the aircraft. So we transported 42 people onto an aircraft, and it's just a heavy weight that comes down upon you. Not only does it facing their mortality, but your own mortality. Mm-hmm. And, 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 of course, that's something that people need to be aware of, too. And um, you also have a song called Sing Me Back, and um, you, you, you want to tell us about it quickly before we uh, go ahead and play it for you? Sure. Uh, Sing Me Back really uh, was when I was trying to, trying to get back into my music. You know, uh, we always get told growing up, you got to get a real job. So <laughs> I, I fought against music a lot of times. And I said, oh, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to play around a little bit here and there. And I'd come back from a deployment and met Mark Conklin, who I wrote the song with. And we just got to talking. We didn't even write that day. And we were just talking about old music and how it kind of takes you back in time, back to memories. So it hit me like a lightning bolt in my pickup truck on the way home. And I said, man, sing me back. So we got to write a song about that. Mm -hmm. So that was where it came from, about how you can hear a song or you can hear a singer singing a song. And it takes you back to your first kiss or your first pickup truck ride or sitting there with your grandparents and all those different places. It's almost like a first everything, which is really good. I mean, that's what we need is like a song that will take you back to the first whatever. Yes, that's a great idea. 
Oh, that's a really good song as well, too. And do you have any other music in the works? Uh, you know, I've got a ton of stuff in the works right now. Uh, I've got a lot of great co-writers since I moved to Nashville. We just wrote one today. Uh, it's called No Man in Black. Uh, I'm really excited about it because it's essentially a song based off of What If There Was No Johnny Cash. Mm-hmm. So we're working on that. Um, some other ones based off of some of my experience, one called Home. Uh, we have another great one coming out for Mother's Day that's uh, being worked on in the studio right now. It's called Thank God for Mama. Uh-huh. I wrote that with Zach Kennard and Lawrence Gooley. So uh, lots and lots and lots of music. That's one of my biggest things since I moved to Nashville is just writing music and honing that craft. That is amazing. We'll talk about more of your work as well, too. Right now here, singing me back from Johnny Sin right here on the Mike Weiser Show. <laughs> And I was walking off stage When a good old boy about twice my age Handed me a shot beside the bar Well, he said Can I ask for one request? I said Bring it on, hoss, you bet What you want to hear Okay, looks like uh, we got a little sample of that song anyway here, too. So, so <laughs> yeah, I guess it's kind of like a sample day here on the Mike Wagner Show. So um, where can people uh, find your music? And um, do you have any an upcoming album, or what do you have coming up in 2020? Well, uh, all the music is available on everybody's favorite streaming services. So Spotify, Amazon, uh, iTunes, you can reach pretty much anywhere. I wanted to make sure that. I did it just like the pros do, so we put it out there to, uh, to everything. Um, and, of course, you can add it to your favorite playlist and so on and so forth. Those things always help us artists. Um, I'm working more on singles for 2020, uh, which, which just kind of come the big thing in the industry, is that we don't really release entire albums. Um, as far as the way people digest music and things these days, it's all about the single and pushing the single. So kind of trying to follow the trends, but what I do want to do is at the end of this year, uh, there should be eight songs released. So by the end of 2020, uh, what I'm going to do is something a little bit different. I'm going to have it pressed on vinyl, and we're going to do that instead of doing CDs. Oh, I'm so looking forward to it. And where can people uh, purchase or listen to your music at? Uh, The music can be purchased, like I said, on iTunes and things like that. It's also available on my website, which is uh, www.johnnysomemusic.com. Uh, the vinyl and everything will be available on there as well as the song. All right. that right. We're looking forward to it as well, too. Once again, John Easton, singer, songwriter, musician from the Mike Wagner Show. We have a couple of minutes here. We'd love to have you back on as at, as soon as well, too. And uh, who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Oh, man, that's a hard question. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I guess life. Life is, uh, is probably the biggest influence in, in my career besides – my family uh, and getting that music from them, but that's where I take things from. Um, one of my favorite songs that I've written recently was uh, one of my friend's stories. It's a love story, but it's not your normal love story. It deals with addiction and things like that. It's a little bit dark, but it's real. And I think we need real music to go along with the other stuff. That's just drinking songs and happy songs mm-hmm. uh, because it's things we can relate to. Uh huh, and, and that's amazing as well too. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Yeah, I, I think the best advice I could give anybody is don't take no. Uh, there's a ton of no's out there. There's very few yeses, uh, but that one yes can get you through all the no's. Hmm. And I think that's a really good advice as well too. And once again, John, I'd like to give bank. Big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. Looking forward to hearing you again soon. Keep us up to date and keep us hungry. Once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people purchase or listen to your music? Uh, okay. Um, so my uh, Facebook is always a great place to reach me. Uh, it's John Eason Music. Uh, my website, www.johneasonmusic.com. Then, of course, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, iTunes. Uh, lots of new songs coming out in 2020, so just keep an eye out for those. Those will all be released on Spotify and all streaming services. And YouTube. Got a new music video coming out, hopefully here in the next couple months. We're working on that. We're a little behind with everything going on. Um, and then, of course, the barbecue sauce and things like that are all available on the website, too. 
Oh, that's fantastic. You're making me hungry. I'm coming over for a barbecue. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, John, a big thank you for your time. Once again, John Easton, singer, songwriter, musician from Louisiana, Mike Wagner Show. Thank you very much. You've been fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon, especially in 2020. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. We'd love to have you back on. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.